Hello, this is Becky Berg, and welcome to the introduction to Which One Doesn't Belong. In this session, I hope that you'll be able to justify the benefits of the Which One Doesn't Belong and that you will know how to implement a Which One Doesn't Belong. So let's put our learner hats on and engage as learners. You're going to see an image that includes four different numbers. You simply need to decide which one doesn't belong. If you have an answer, think about how you would justify your thinking to others. Also, come up with another way you could answer this problem. Here are some possible responses and perhaps one of these connects with how you thought about it. So let's take a look. These responses are from both students and from adult learners such as yourself. So nine doesn't belong because it's a single digit and the other three numbers are two digit numbers with a tens place. Nine doesn't belong because the sum of the digits in the other numbers is seven. So for example, one plus six equals seven, two plus five equals seven, and four plus three equals seven. 16 doesn't belong because it's the only even number. 16 doesn't belong because it is the only number that has even factors, except for one. The others have only odd factors. 43 doesn't belong because it's the only number that isn't a square. 43 doesn't belong because it is a prime number and the rest are composite numbers. 43 doesn't belong because 9 plus 16 equals 25, and 43 is not part of that family. So we came up with reasons for 9, 16, and 43 as a class. Now, hmm, what about 25? If you haven't done so already, could you come up with a way that 25 wouldn't belong? Here are some possibilities. 25 doesn't belong because it is the only number that is the value of a coin. 25 doesn't belong because the ones place digit in all the other numbers is divisible by three. Hopefully that felt kind of good to stretch ourselves a bit. So let's step outside of our learner hat and let's talk about the benefits of which one doesn't belong. Now, first of all, you can see that that routine, that particular question, really only takes a few minutes, all right? But let's talk about the value of those few minutes, okay? Now, kids are finding similarities and differences. That's powerful. We have a high yield strategy of, of Marzano's that's happening there. Um, students, you are using math vocabulary through the discourse, right? As we took a look at what students said, there was lots of discourse, lots of vocabulary as they justified their thinking. And that process of justifying your reasoning and sharing the why is so powerful for our students. So let's reflect on this a bit. As you think about what you just did as a learner with those four numbers, were there various ways to think about it? Were you able to justify why? And did you hear a variety of math vocabulary? What math vocabulary came out of that routine of 9, 16, 25, and 43? Now, as I think back, some of the vocabulary was even, odd, tens place, prime, composite, factors. Lots of great important vocabulary came out just as we chatted, if you will, for a couple minutes. All right, so those are the benefits, but let's clarify what exactly is a which one doesn't belong. What is it that each of those will have in common, okay? Which one doesn't belong? It's just a simple routine. It's short that has power in creating a community of thinkers, reasoners, listeners, and justifiers. Really a great community builder 
Okay. Simply put, this routine includes four simple numbers, shapes, or other images. All right. Now, can't just be randomly selected, but the graphics are the four things are designed to be interpreted in a variety of different ways in order to spark that deep mathematical thinking and that discussion. All right. Which one doesn't belong activities do not just have a single correct answer. So be careful as you might find examples of which one doesn't belong. Always ask yourself, does it have more than one single correct answer? Okay, super important. So let's kind of think back and connect back to the why. All right, we talked about the benefits, but let's dig a little deeper. All right, identifying similarities and differences has a high effect size for our students' learning, okay? So this isn't just engaging for kids, but the research and the meta-analyses really support the power of kids seeing and identifying similarities and differences, all right? So within a short five minutes, you can really get a lot of value out of that time. All right. Now, we also have the mathematical practices. Students are really engaging in many of these mathematical practices as they do a which one doesn't belong. They're making sense of it. They're constructing viable arguments. They're attending to precision, right? Being precise with that vocabulary, along with many other things that they do in regards to these mathematical practices. So we're gonna dig a little deeper into these practices in one of our tasks, but super powerful, okay? So two big reasons why. Identifying similarities and differences is a high yield strategy, and it connects to these mathematical practices. So let's reflect on our targets for this little session. Can you justify the benefits of, of why this routine is valuable to students? And do you think you know how to implement a which one doesn't belong? Thanks for joining me and enjoy implementing which one doesn't belong.